Okay, this video is made specifically as um, to assist someone else that reached out to me and asked or had questions about the Geet Fuel processor. And uh, because he had a fairly uh, advanced understanding of the principles of it, I didn't feel the need to go into every detail. But uh, I can, if anybody else has questions, I'm, I'm, I'll help you any way I can. So, okay, this is basically the the essence of the Geet processor. So, the how it works is you got an intake manifold, which is just a pipe, this, this whole pipe, and it goes straight to the intake from the carburetor, right, all the way through to the intake. And it is heated one way or another by the exhaust, right? So that's basically a pipe inside of a pipe. Okay, and uh, w what is very important, and uh, these two fluids, the exhaust fluid, which is, you know, it's just exhaust, but it is a fluid, and the intake fluid have to be going opposite directions. And there's reasons for that, and I don't understand them all myself, but there's static going on. Uh, there's uh, maybe resonance, maybe something. So um, heating this up with an electric coil or something, you wouldn't likely get the same effect. Okay, so you need this, this communication or this opposite uh, stuff going on. Now, Paul, and uh, like I was telling the, the, the gentleman that reached out to me, Paul was a scientist and a visionary, but he wasn't necessarily a mechanic. So he was taking a carburetor, and for uh, the small engines that he was working on, well, he'd use a bubbler too. And uh, if you want to know what a bubbler is, I'll, it's basically a, uh, an air bath. But when he used a carburetor, he'd take the carburetor that was on the machine and the ones he was working on typically were like single cylinder less than 10 horsepower engines and he would restrict the intake as much as he needed to because this air fuel mix mixture was really rich we're talking really rich like choke on full rich Okay, and then by the time it gets here, it's already been introduced to some heat. And this this is the rod that, uh, this is what uh, makes a, a Geet fuel press processor unique is this rod. Okay, and uh, it, ha it, it just needs an, an eighth of an inch of clearance on each side. Of course, it... Uh, it won't be hovering in the middle like that when you measure it because this is how it, after this engine runs for a while this rod will will migrate to wherever it wants to be and it'll probably rotate but it'll levitate in there okay uh, you, it's really discernible these these fuel processors work best when they're straight up and down this is horizontal but uh, the best way to do it is straight up and down. Not always possible, but if it is, uh, that's better, right? And you need to maintain a high vacuum, like uh, in inches of mercury, it'd be like 15 inch, inches of vacuum or probably one negative bar. I don't, uh, well, no, I shouldn't have said that. I don't know what it would be in bar or if, you can measure vacuum in bars, but uh, in inches of mercury, it's it needs to be like 15 to 17. 17 is optimal, right? And then this is the representation of an engine. That's the intake and that's exhaust. What I forgot to incorporate into this diagram was a valve somewhere between the reactor and the engine to let more supplementary air in. Because like I said, this is really rich. Like, there's no way the engine could run on that under any circumstances, it's that rich. 
it can until it gets uh, started and running for more than two seconds and then it needs more air right and uh there's there should be a valve here like uh right there somewhere and that valve would be you know if you know if it was uh, half as big as in diameter as your uh intake pipe that'd be plenty big okay so uh <clears throat> why i was saying that this engine lends itself best to uh a fixed rpm is because you could tune it to run under uh, a fixed load and just set it and forget it but if you want to throttle it up and down like an automotive application then you have to manipulate the amount of air going in here and probably the throttle you know simultaneously which you can but it's it takes tuning and finesse i never got i never uh committed the time to do it okay this rod is made uh i made them out of uh out of mild steel but uh, paul had experimented with all kinds of things from glass to different metals to um who knows what i don't know any everything um if if i was you know if you're building one for the first time just start with mild steel so just find a a rod which i i used grade five bolts out of the hardware store and just cut the head off rounded the ends off and stuck them in there and just make sure they they're not too snug and they had a tiny you know some room on each side um what else can I tell you? The exhaust, you know, after it comes out of the exhaust and uh, migrates down here, it goes out to your muffler, to atmosphere, to wherever, right? And um, that's about, uh, well, with this information, that's about all you need to know, I suppose, right now. The plans... Um, Paul had on the net that he gave away had another valve incorporated somewhere and that was uh, bogus he did did that on purpose and he he just there's reasons for it I won't get into it now but uh, basically he uh, it was more of a dead man switch or like for his own safety because he knew he was in uh, he had uh, he had attracted the attentions of the authorities and he was scared that he might get uh, locked up or incarcerated and he did but he, he eventually got out um i'm sure i'm forgetting something oh this rod okay well this this reactor uh when you do get it started and get it running it'll uh it'll run f it you'll get it to where it runs fine and then it won't run anymore and that's because this rod is burning in and that's what they call it burning in and it's establishing itself so you again you have to manipulate this valve that i didn't draw in here and the carburetor maybe and uh it'll find its happy spot for the fuel you're burning you know whether it's gasoline uh or whatever and uh once you get this uh running good or get get far enough along that this engine could uh it, it won't have to be gas anymore you could burn uh you know paint thinner diesel uh alcohol and water and then uh but uh, if you're burning uh different fuels you have to go you have to the the length of this rod will have to be adjusted the heavier the fuel the longer this rod is so i started off with uh maybe two and a half three inches and uh, you, you, you take a, a compass and you uh, find where it points north on this end or spins the other direction, then go to this end, or it might just do it on one end or the other. And that's how long the rod wants to be. It might want to be half inch shorter on both ends. It might not be long enough. So uh, Anyway, when you first try to get it started, I would st I would start with gasoline and then uh, then go from there. Okay, I hope that helps. If you have any more questions, just reach out and I'll, I'll do what I can for you. Bye-bye.